Coming to the last point, how can I apply the results to my, to my patient care? Or can I apply? Are they applicable to my clinical practice? The question is, were the study per, per patients similar to patients in my practice? If the, the study you found, if the study you appraised has all the participants, but your question is young, that is, in, that means it is difficult to apply the findings of one study to your uh, own practice. And uh, the one way to ask this is, is there any compelling reason why I could not apply this study's results to my patient? It may be related to age or to race or to any other uh, characteristic, demographic characteristic of the participants. Other questions you may ask to decide whether this, the, the study you appraise, the results of one study are applicable for your patient care is, yes. was the duration of follow-up adequate? Because in a particular um, disease or particular condition, the um, follow-up duration, the, you might need a certain follow-up duration. You need years to see the uh, adverse effects of tobacco smoking uh, for your vessels, for the heart. So uh, was the study uh, long enough to answer your question? What was the magnitude of the risk? Or even if the risk is real, does it matter? Does it clinically matter for you? If there is a, between the study and control groups, a blood pressure difference of one millimeter mercury, and if it is significant, and if it is valid study, it still does not mean much for you, it might not mean much for you, because this magnitude is still clinically negligible and very small. Therefore, we may look for, for uh, the two uh, terms which you already learned previously, namely the number needed to treat and number needed to harm. What was this number needed to treat? The formula was one divided by absolute risk reduction. Just reminding once more. And should I attempt to stop the exposure? Could be one question uh, related to the applicability. Uh, also here, we may look at the strength of the evidence and the amount of the risk and how much benefit would be lost by withholding the treatment. Because as I said in, I said in the er earlier part of this presentation, you have to weigh the benefits and harms. Although we know that paracetamol, the, the one of the mm, most harmless medications we have in our hands, Although it, is, it has still some side effects, it may not be risky to use it. There are indications where we cannot omit and we have to apply it. So you have to weigh, balance the harms and uh, risks, the benefits and the expected uh, benefits and the risks. So that was my presentation. I have one more slide.